deciding which structure you want to use. But there is other information about X-ray crystallography that you should understand when comparing structures so you can tell which structure is most suitable for the analysis you want to do. Now, X-ray crystallography here, I'm just going to give you a brief introduction. You have some protein in solution which you precipitate out, but it needs to be precipitated out in a regular pattern. And so you add some precipitate, a high salt, or, or a volume exclusion agent like PEG, and that will precipitate your protein out in a regular order. It's not a random aggregation. Uh, you want a particular order uh, of the molecule stacking to make that crystal. Those crystals are exposed to x-rays and you get a diffraction pattern. So the x-rays interact with the electrons in your atoms and they scatter. And they're going to scatter according to the pattern of the electrons or the packing of the molecules within your crystal. Um, now I'm going to just wave my hands here, although this is a real time sink for the experimentalist. But uh, part of the information the experimentalist gets is location of the spots on the film and their light or darkness. That's half the information they need to solve the structure. The other half is they need phases. And there are different techniques for getting those. I'm not going to talk about those. But once they have uh, the amplitude and the phases, uh, the amplitudes sort of tell you they're going 30 miles an hour or 40 miles an hour, but not telling you the direction, whether they're going south or, or north or east. But the phases give you direction. Once you have both pieces of information, then you can calculate the electron density map. That electron density map is interpreted by the experimentalist. And they fit atoms into that electron density map and you get an atomic resolution model that you have here. That is your structure. And it is this structure that's deposited into the protein databank. Now, what the experimentalist does is they take this structure and they will calculate a predicted diffraction pattern. And they compare that predicted diffraction pattern to the experimental pattern, and that gives them a sense of residual error. How well does my structure fit the diffraction pattern? How much of the data am I fitting? Uh, and the error is what's left over. How much am I not fitting? So they minimize the difference between the predicted diffraction pattern and the experimental diffraction pattern during refinement. And then when they reach a plateau, they evaluate, is this reasonable uh, for this resolution structure? And then when they're finalized, they submit the structure to the protein databank. The information that you see here are two pieces that are critical. Well, you don't need to worry about unit cell lengths or angles or that. What you do need to look at is the resolution and the R values and the R freeze. Those are the residual errors. Now resolution, as you can see on this slide, is sort of, of counterintuitive. And that is um, the smaller the number uh, for resolution, the uh, higher the quality of the data. And so you'll see here the electron density around this particular ligand at 2.85 is kind of blobby. By the time we get to 1.80, you start seeing more definition. You start seeing uh, almost individual atoms. By the time you're at 1.1 angstrom resolution, you can actually see the hole in this tryptophan ring. And so the higher the resolution, uh, the uh, higher the higher quality structure you have, you're going to have and the better the fit of the structure to your data. Now in your lower resolution structures uh, around two and a half to three angstroms, you're not going to see hydrogens in the structure because they're too small to be seen. But as you start going to higher resolution structures, uh, less than two angstroms, down around one angstrom, you start seeing the individual hydrogen atoms in your structure. Now, the reason 
uh, a smaller number needs a higher quality structure is because that number reflects the spacing between your measurements or your data taking. So the closer together your planes are, the more data points you have and the more information. It's equivalent to smaller pixels. And so you get a, a higher quality image of the structure itself. So if you're comparing structures, most of the time you want to go to the higher resolution structure if everything else is equivalent. A more indirect way of looking at the quality of the structure is the residual factor, the R value and the R free. Now residuals are comparing the difference between your experimental data, your uh, diffraction pattern, and the predicted diffraction pattern from your structure. The R value reflects the data that you use to refine or determine your structure. Uh, and the R free reflects the data that is not used to refine the structure. And so what the experimentalist does at the beginning of the experiment, they will randomly pull out 5% of the data and they will set it aside. And they will not use that, they will not target that in the minimization procedure. So the 95% of the working data is what is targeted in the minimization, in the refinement. And so uh, the experimentalist, because it is a very complex pattern going from small changes in the structure to overall changes in your uh, diffraction pattern, sometimes you can make changes here that are fitting noise uh, in your minimization procedure. What will happen then is if you make changes here and your R value lowers but your R free stays the same or goes up, the experimentalist should reject those changes and try and do a new fitting. So that R free acts as an independent assessment about the quality of the refinement. Now, uh, back in the mid 80s, this technique came in, and if you find structures from that period, you'll see about 10% difference between an R value and an R free. You're likely to see less than 5% difference between the R value and the R free uh, today because we have better refinement techniques, uh, better fitting of the structures to the experimental data. But generally what you're looking for if you're comparing two structures is you want to take the data with the lowest R value. Now a typical R value R free can be about 20% residual error. So there's still a lot of information in the data that we're not able to fit with the experimental models that we have. So those help you compare two structures and say what's the better quality structure.